Hello. Welcome back to another Psychedelic Art Exchange concert poster video blog. Uh, we got some great stuff to show you today, but before we get into that, we've got a little announcement to make about our auction and about what Psychedelic Art Exchange is going to look like moving forward. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, before we get into this very interesting selection of posters, just wanted to do some basic housekeeping, bring our subscribers up to date on a recent move that we made when we when just last Friday we introduced a supplemental stream of auctions to enhance our regular solid schedule of CGC auctions and mega auctions we have the tendency to and the desire to go off road a little bit and we had been creating a flurry of smaller focused auctions. Well, we have now moved these aside to this supplemental stream, which invites the world of live auctioneers back to our posters. This is something that Bull will be running consistently. Don't confuse it as another main platform it is like ebay it's uh it's another mm -hmm. opportunity to reach more buyers and thus enhance uh the reach of what we do here yeah so i again if there is any confusion you can reach us email us we'll you know we can walk you through whatever you need that's what we do but um yeah we've got a great description of what's going on on our blog i'll put a link in the description of this video um, but we've got a sale kicking off on this new platform and it's got some amazing stuff in it. So we just wanted to show you a little bit of what we've got uh, for auction right now. So this auction is, uh, you know, it's a really eclectic rock and roll auction and mm -hmm. it spans from coast to coast and overseas. Yeah. As we were cataloging it, I realized that there is a good representation of posters from our home, my home in Baltimore, Maryland, and Katie's adopted home in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. So we're going to play with that juxtaposition <laughs> for a moment. And then, you know, uh, maybe this is something we'll play out over this blog as it matures. But anyway, <laughs> Baltimore, Maryland. Um always a, a a great concert stop along the way you know every major act in the history of rock and roll pretty much has stopped here but as far as the posters are concerned in this auction we have posters from some of what were traditionally the baltimore area's most concentrated venues so let's start with the baltimore civic center where you know everybody including the beatles has played we have a 74 Beach Boys poster from the Baltimore Civic Center. And it's, you know, not in stellar shape, but I've never seen another copy. These, I mean, it's on sure, yeah. paper and it's a, it's a little bit tattered. And, you know, although it's not the Beach Boys at their creative peak, it is, you know, it's, it's, it's a representation of, of, you know, what they were. So Baltimore Civic Center. Amazing. Beach which leads us to Painters Mill Music Fair, which was a small theater in the round in Baltimore County. It was five miles from where I grew up and I saw dozens of shows there over the years. It's now a BJ's warehouse, but <laughs> it's, it, it, was, it was built for you know theater presentations. It was in the round and it was, kicked off in the early 70s and there was this local promotion group called Tree Frog Productions that created a series of posters. They're, you know, lovely cardboard, mostly one color screen printed, but they're a real pocket. They don't really exist anywhere but in my own backyard. And I've made an effort to try to create a full collection of these over the years and I'm still missing some holes. So if anybody has any of these, please get in touch with me. Regardless, this is a tree frog poster, um, you know, essentially with Richie Havens in 71. And, you know, it's a rare, interesting regional piece. And 
It's, you know, those of us who grew up in this area understand this and it's a special okay. specialty pocket. So anyhow, from the obscure-ish to a real superstar, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, mm -hmm. 1980. Mm -hmm. Meriwether Post Pavilion. Again, Meriwether, I saw everybody, you know, there in the, over the years. My God. Um, I can't even begin to read off the list, but, you know, my favorites, Grateful Dead, Neil Young, saw Jerry play there, oh, uh, King Crimson. The, the list goes on. Uh, anyhow, these kind of posters really don't exist in great quantities they were you know these were box office posters essentially they were posted in and around Meriwether and in whatever ticket outlets there were Ticketron what was it was it yeah Ticketron back then we had to line up in a Sears or a Montgomery Ward or whatever and that's where these posters came from and very few of them exist and this killer design a petty you know, as he was starting to break out into superstar status, who, you know, his career needs no embellishment to be accepted, uh, you know, as a Wilbury sort of sealed that for me, you know, with that crowd, it was so, but anyway, kick ass, Baltimore area, area Meriwether Post Pavilion, which again, any posters out there from Meriwether Post, please let us know. There is a Hendrix poster from 69 that's just, you know, one of the most demanded posters of all time. Sure. So <laughs> Help us find it. Let's cross the country. <laughs> ah, yes. And so the West Coast thing, the Seattle thing, the Pacific Northwest, yeah. it, it, it dovetailed along with what was going along in San Francisco. And this was... Sure. Uh, what is 69 festival in Seattle? Yeah, so I believe it was 1968, actually. Um, and at you know, a lot of it's at the Aqua Theater where that crazy Grateful Dead poster yes. was from. There's this very rare Grateful Dead poster that was at Aqua Theater. It was a tiny. Can you tell me anything about this venue? Well, it was in Green Lake, which is actually right down the street from where I live, and it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and the, the Grateful Dead did play there in the, the following year, 1969. Um, clearly, so this poster was from what is what was called the Seafair Rock Music Festival. Seafair is a is a local like festival that happens every year in the city, and it doesn't actually have anything to do with music. It's uh, mostly just like you know, like a street festival, there's like boat racing and there's the Blue Angels and everything. Um, but I guess they, it's been going on since the 1950s and I guess they did a rock music festival one year that had uh, Sonny and Cher, Moby Grape, Glenn Campbell, um, and, and whoever was there and had the poster took little notes on it, which I don't know if you can read some of those or like show them a little bit closer, but it's pretty this, funny. This, this, this is a stitch. First of all, this poster, I mean, I don't know of any other copies that exist. This is, okay. and, and, and the Pacific Northwest in the sixties is a specific pocket. It's a very, mm -hmm. you know, a very deep, uh, uh, study, but this, this cardboard screen printed little lovely thing it has all these notes on it that i mean essentially whoever you know owned this poster was making a critique and it's just it's <laughs> brilliant you really you i don't want to spend too much time on it and you'll you know go into the the product description and you can see it but it's yeah. this is one of those funny little pockets when you get posters with notes and and inscriptions on it it's just a whole nother in a whole nother game. So anyhow, for rare, interesting, authentic, you really take a close look at this. So yeah, absolutely. There. So now we're going to jump to the 70s. And this poster from the Paramount Northwest in Seattle was mm -hmm. part of the Paramount Northwest uh, group of theaters. I think there were three of them, one in Portland and one in Vancouver. Is that correct? Well, I don't know how many there were, but I can tell you now that the Paramount 
Seattle still exists and I see shows there semi-regularly. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful old theater. Um, I mean, most of my knowledge of Seattle's music history starts in, in you know, the late 80s and the 90s with grunge, but clearly there was a scene. Their music did come through Seattle in the 60s and 70s, and the Paramount has kind of always been like a place that people came through and played. So this was from 1975. It's a calendar for May and June of that year. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of great names on there. I mean, Kraftwerk, Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, but clearly, yeah, Kiss and Rush are kind of the, the main focus of that poster there with Kiss in the background. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Kiss has always popped in our auctions. There mm -hmm. is a group of Kiss collectors that are ravenous and yeah they were they were a thing they were 70s rock this is when i grew <laughs> up they were they, they, and this was their really their i think the first time they went to the west coast it was 75 mm -hmm. the dress to kill tour i believe and they were just starting to i mean really blow up so this is a real cool piece it's it's missing a chunk but still this is a worthy piece for anybody that searches this kind of material yeah. That is, you know, that is the little trip to Seattle, but we'll go a little bit further up the coast and tie this in with um, a 1969 poster from John Mooring, who was really one of the finest artists from that era and from that region. And he did some incredibly beautiful psychedelic posters and this was one for a jeff beck group concert that i've come to find out never happened the tour right. was canceled in february and not rescheduled uh mm -hmm. but this, this, still the art exists there is it is trimmed up, so it's not in full original condition but it's got a real thick tactile feel to it the artworks mm -hmm. wonderful it'll fill a hole in someone's uh, collection for sure who hunts this material because it doesn't come up that often there's yeah the 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 mother's poster the um you know the the uh, uh there's a janice that's amazing i've seen several of these this guy really nails it anyhow so that is that's the west coast we're gonna fly back east <laughs> for uh you know a really fun mm -hmm. and important in the history of rock and roll the ah. New York dolls in 73 at the beginning of their game uh, mm -hmm. it references direct from their waldorf astoria party yeah. it's quite a story research it on your own but this is the, <laughs> the madness of this band the whole uh New York scene these guys set the set the bar for a lot of what followed uh, yeah. Katie, I mean, do, can you interject I mean that's the birth of punk rock essentially right there especially in New York um the New York Dolls that's like the most one of the most classic images of them too um I yeah that that show that they had played on I believe it was Halloween at the Waldorf Astoria and Johnny Thunders smashed a pumpkin on uh, David Johansson's head. They had been like playing together all around. They were starting to get real popular and they were starting to disagree with each other and just got in a fight on stage. Um, so that's, yeah, that's an incredible historical artifact right there. This this had me searching for the poster for the Waldorf event, which I yeah. believe exists, but I've never seen a copy. Again, if anyone out there in the world has a copy of that poster, please share it for us, even just for educational purposes. But we'd love to sell it too. That's that sounds like an interesting poster. Yeah, and we're gonna wrap with uh, you know the 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 big shiny poster. Uh, -huh. uh it's 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 been fixed, but not it's not horrible i mean you there's there's some work to the corners and whatnot but it's still this is uh, you, you know early pink floyd 71 right around um the time when i think they were they hadn't released metal 
Uh, it was huh. after Amagama and Adam Hart Mother, but they hadn't released uh, metal yet. So it falls right in there. And it's one of these kooky stories where they played some park in London and all the freaks showed up and they had a giant octopus in the in the in in the pond in the park it just if you like this band again this is not an easy piece we sold an original in lesser condition several years ago for around five thousand so your guess is as good as mine and what this copy will go for so those are some of the highlights from <laughs> our new auction stream we have an auction that ends sunday Sunday, October 15th, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time is when lots are going to start to close. Uh, thank you for taking this journey with us, and uh, we'll see you next time.